Hey everyone, welcome to Websleuths YouTube Live. My name is Trisha Griffith. I am delighted that you're with us tonight. I am so thrilled to be the manager of websleuths.com, the best true crime discussion forum in the universe. And with me, of course, is my ever trusty executive producer, Insightful One. And thank you, Insightful One, for posting Beth B. Hello, Beth B. It is good to see you, my darling. Glad you made it. And Kathy Lynch is here. Mama Mia, Laura Thomas, Emily Narb, uh, Mar Marilyn Landis, Hooser Girl, Kathy Lynch, Diane Brock, Mama Mia. And if I miss your name, please forgive me. Okay. It's because, again, I'm an old bat. What can I tell you? Hi, Belinda Sutherland. <laughs> and uh, Belinda Sutherland has uh, given us some good news. We were going to talk about another missing Tennessee 15 year old teenager. But she has been found safe. I'm just going to tell you really quickly. All right. Uh, the Williams County Sheriff's Office said uh, Akela Jaslyn Walton was found safe. That's it. She disappeared. She's safe. She's home with her family. Now let's give them privacy. All right. So I love having those stories. That is fantastic. That is. And, you know, it seems like insightful one when we put these stories up of like a missing person and it's brand new. Mm -hmm. So many times that we, when we go to air, they've been found. I feel like it's like a, a good luck thing almost, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to keep doing that. So anyway, yes. So she has been found safe. That's uh, is it a Kayla? I think it's a Kayla Jaslyn Walton found safe. Great news. Absolutely great news. So let's see. Hello, four sons, mom and moonlight view. Good to see you. Emily Narb. Hello. Hello. Okay, there is lots going on. Now, I can't believe I'm saying this. Wednesday, Chad Daybell's trial for the murder of Tylee and JJ and his wife, Tammy, uh, starts starts Wednesday. Yep. I think we can all remember that day in June of 2020 when they found the bodies on Chad's property. And remember that phone call. It's it's hard to listen to because you can't understand it. But mm. when you read along with the script, it's a phone call. Lori's called Chad and uh, she, from jail. Yep. And she says, are you okay? And he says, no, they're searching the property. And she's yep. just not just silence. They know. They know they're done. You know, and again, it's like, okay, here you are thinking you're these big magical people. Uh, how did you get caught? Didn't that give you a hint that maybe you don't have these powers that you think you might? But anyway, yes, that's right. It is game over, Emily, uh, Emily Narb, for Potato Head Chad. It really is. But they have picked the jurors. They've got it down to 18. And uh, I've been watching Nate Eaton and uh, Lauren from Hidden True Crime. And by the way, Lauren from Hidden True Crime will be coming on uh, at least once a week during the trial to update Yay. us. Yay. I know it's going to be so cool. I, yeah. I am so I excited. Love her. And she'll be here uh, this week. She'll be here Thursday. So I'm so grateful that she has agreed to help us because it's nice to have boots on the crown there, you know, and see what's going on. Um, Burt Popcorn says, how did they know where to dig? Well, if I remember correctly, an insightful one, please jump in if I'm blathering on like an idiot. <laughs> They, uh, they, they look at the electronics to see where Chad was and to see where Alex was. Yeah, the cell phone data. The cell phone data. And when they saw Alex and Chad on the property on the same day, and they had that uh, text where Chad and Tammy, they would text like, I'll be home at five. Okay. You know, I'll be home at 10. Okay. There was never any stories or how's your day or anything like that but on this until you know, and what i said until until dun dun no. dun <laughs> and on this particular day that alex and chad's electronic data both showed them on the property in this particular area he texted tammy and told her a story about seeing a raccoon on the fence and so he had to go shoot the raccoon and he buried it in the pet cemetery so they went, okay, why in the hell would Alex be there? Why all of a sudden would he 
text Tammy a story when he's never done anything like that. And he was obviously digging in this cemetery. Now, they talked to neighbors, and I don't know if this was before or after they found Tylee and JJ's body, but they they knew they had a big bonfire there months before, huge fire that they kept going. And um, they, uh, they, when they heard that, you know, they, they knew. They just, they knew. And they got a search warrant, and it was for the house, the property, the shed. And I, if I'm not mistaken, didn't they have scent dogs there? I honestly don't remember right now. I think they yeah. did. Yes. And I'm sorry that you put somebody up before and I wanted to read oh, who yeah. that person's name because I think they're new. Oh, hi, Carol. Carol uh, Monteverde says, hi, all. I've been following Nate and we'll follow the whole trial. Well, great. And we love Nate. Uh, I've written Nate many times uh, to the point where there might be a restraining order coming. I don't know. I'm just saying I've written him many times, but he ignores me. <laughs> okay. I'm used to it. I'm used to it. It's my life. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Huh, boo? This is my baby boo right here. He's the best boy ever. So, hi, Micro Blue. Uh, anyway, so, but we all, we all knew when this story broke and JJ and Tylee were missing and Tammy died, you know, all of a sudden and then Chad and Lori get married. That's how we were introduced to this story when these, these things had already happened. Oh, and Charles Vallow uh, murdered in the summer before in 2019. Um, I, we knew that Chad, I mean, we knew that Tylee and JJ weren't coming home, although I had hope. I had hope that they had given the kids to some, you know, the end of the world is coming. We're going to live in a bunker and we're going to yeah. dig a hole in the forest. Yeah. Remember, that's what yeah. we were all hoping, but no. Yeah. And I just, to me, one of the most compelling pieces of evidence in Lori Daybell's trial was when her sister phoned her in jail. And this was a sister that went on 2020 with her mother and defended her till the death. Lori would never do this. She's a wonderful mother. She's loving. There's no way. And then her sister saw the pictures of Lori and Chad on the beach in Hawaii. And she's, you know, doing the hula and he's playing the ukulele while her kids are dead and buried. And her sister is screaming at her in this jail phone call, you know, saying, how could you do that? How could you go and and be, go on the beach knowing your kids were in the ground? And anyway, yeah. she just kept saying, well, you don't know the whole story. I had to start over. I needed a life. Me, 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 me. So it's going to be very interesting to see what evidence they have with Chad. Because I think they have more with Chad. Now, Brian Eaton, um, sorry, Nate Eaton, uh, said something very interesting today. He said he has seen the list that Chad and Lori had of the people they thought were dark and the people that they thought were light. Now, the dark people were the zombies that needed to be destroyed. Of course, that was Lori's kids. You know, the troubled child, JJ. Chad didn't want to deal with him. And, of course, didn't want to deal with Tylee because she was getting mouthy. But with Tylee gone, who was going to watch JJ? Certainly not Lori. So they were considered dark spirits. And according to Nate Eaton, all of Chad's children were considered light. None of them had the evilness that they needed to be killed. So uh, what a surprise there, huh? So, yeah, yeah exactly, Tharvey. Chad and money meant more to Lori Vallow than anything. But, you know, again, she's always had this, Lori Vallow's always been this, this, I don't know what other word to use, crazy woman that thought she had special powers, you know? Oh, Carol, the whole thing, like you said, is so sad because it's so avoidable. Okay, chill. Hey, chill. It's so avoidable because uh, the Woodcocks, Larry and Kay Woodcock, JJ's grandparents, they... Sorry, guys. Like two okay, that's it. Enough. Enough. Come on. Sorry, I got to take care of the toddlers. But um, they uh, 
They would have taken Jade and they would have taken Tylee. They would have taken JJ and Tylee, they've said. Absolutely. Uh, her son, Lori's son, and I forgot his name already. Colby. Colby said he would have taken uh, both of them. He would have taken both of them, you know, to try and, and, um, and take care of him so his mom didn't have to. So it is just so sad. And they thought for sure they would never be caught. Just the fact that they went to Hawaii and got married a couple of weeks after Tammy was killed. But, oh, really? Summer's going to be at CrimeCon? Oh, I would love to meet her. Summer is Lori's other sister. I'm sure she'll be uh, giving a, a talk, and I'm sure it'll be very popular. So, Yeah, she's the one that had on the phone call. Right, yeah. Yeah, I would love to meet her. But anyway... Um, and Darby, I agree with you. Lori never loved JJ because of his issues. JJ represented money, a lot of money. Is it raining outside? I Guys, don't I gotta know. go. I gotta <laughs> you wouldn't know. You're in California. Yeah. I've gotta go. <laughs> Let me go get Lilith if it's right. Yeah, it's she wants to come in. Hang on. Red like wine again. That there's all kinds of things we could think of. Red like wine again oh, says, <laughs> asks, what was the point of them getting married? Why the rush? It could have been a religious thing. It, you know, part of their shared delusion. And it wasn't there something about they had to be together. I mean, be married to be together later on after, you know, the world ended. So who knows with those two delusional people? It's shared delusion, I think. Sorry, guys, I got to run out and get the cat. She won't come in because it's raining and she's stuck in a window seal. I'll be right back. Okay. Red Light Guanigan says, oh, yeah, let's not live in sin, but okay to murder people. That's so effed up. You know how many things are like that, though, in these crimes? They're so senseless. Just like, um, you know, oh, I don't want to get divorced, but murder is okay. I, it's unbelievable so uh oh cats fighting back oh no <laughs> hold on uh oh oh my god can't move doggy look i don't know if you can see but i'm soaking wet oh yes <sighs> sorry guys i've got to go change sorry so well, you keep it's everything raining it's raining just a little bit, just a little. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Um, will you keep everybody entertained, please? Yep. Thank you. Mar Marlene Clausen says they would have had a field day with the with the eclipse today. Oh yeah, that's that's what somebody one of our chatters told me yesterday. Our members said that uh, people were talking about the world is going to end because of the eclipse. I'm like, what? I hadn't heard that, but I'm not surprised. Hey, I got to tell you, my girlfriend and I um, sat outside with lawn chairs and drinks and watched the eclipse, and it was the coolest damn thing. All of a sudden, it went dark, just as yeah. dark as it could be. Oh, it was so wonderful. It was so fun. I got some great, uh, great pictures that I'm going to blow up and put in picture frames. Very cool. Yeah. Red like wine again. That's a perfect example, John List. That is. What about John List? Oh, cause she's talking about what Lori and Chad. Lori and Chad. It's like they had to get married, but you know, for we're guessing maybe religious reasons, they don't want to sin or you know all the shared delusional right. thing. But it's okay to murder. That's fine. Exactly. You know, well, it's remember, like John List. Yeah. Right. They were the chosen ones to lead yeah. the, this group. And by the way, the group that still that believed what Lori and Chad were saying, they're still around. And there are people, from what I understand, that are still around that follow Chad Daybell and Lori. Maybe not so much Lori now, but, you know, are, are still followers and still believers. So, sorry, I look like a, a wet rag, but damn, that was wild. Anyway, um, 
so yeah, I hope you all had fun with the eclipse today because it was pretty cool. It was uh, one of the coolest experiences I've ever had. And I was so grateful that I could be with a friend enjoying it, you know, and, and sit there and just laugh and have a good time. And you know what the coolest thing was huh. when it went dark, you heard this roar and it was people from all over cheering just, yeah. And it was loud and, oh my gosh, it was just amazing. I can't, I can't, I can't say enough about it. And the next one's going to be like in 300 years. So I don't think we need to worry about it. I don't think we'll be here. Actually, they said 20 years. 20? Are you sure? Yeah. Not like this. Or maybe, they maybe said. it's just through Dallas. Maybe it's just through Dallas. Yeah, it depends on where you are. They say they yeah. actually happen a lot, but they're usually over the ocean. So nobody sees them. Oh, that's, where that's no the fun. Ocean. Yeah. That's no fun. Anyway, guys, I apologize for my hair. It just looks terrible, but what the hell? Okay. Anyway, uh, so there you go. Chad Daybell had his kids listed as light spirits, so they were not to be killed. What is going to be interesting? Are they going to call his kids? It was his son that ran into the bedroom and found his mother, you know, halfway off the bed. Chad laid her down on the floor and he, she had pink foam coming out, all the signs of some sort of poisoning or asphyxiation. But uh, now I forgot the oldest son's name. Garth. Garth. Thank you. Uh, Garth and all his kids have been steadfast in their belief that their father is innocent. I think Garth is going to be an important part of the story, an important part of this story. Now, whether they're going to call him or not, I don't know, but you know, that Chad, and I think it was in one of the phone calls, uh, I think to Melanie Gibb, Chad was saying, you know, Garth was there, you know, Garth saw what happened. She just died. Nothing, you know, that's what it was. It was just natural causes and she wasn't feeling well and she had heart problems and that was all a lie. So anyway, yeah, uh, Ara, I'm glad you had fun with your friends too. It really was a special day for me because I don't normally these days get to do a lot with friends, you know, actual things. So this was pretty cool. We couldn't see it here. So my son and I watched it on YouTube live. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> and they had some great uh, coverage too, yeah. all over the place. So yeah, micro blue, they are homicidal weirdos. I was just going to post that up there. Yeah. Yeah. It great. That's, that's their bumper sticker. That's Lori and Chad's bumper sticker. But here's the thing. When the trial starts Wednesday, uh, I know the prosecution, they've got a strong case. There's so much evidence. Again, the biggest being where the bodies were found and why Chad and Alex were together on that area of land. But I'm real anxious to see if my theory is right in that they're going to blame Alex and Lori and Chad's going to say, they were going to kill my kids. They killed Tammy. They were going to kill my kids if I didn't go along with it. Something like that, you know. So death penalty is on the table. And according to Nate Eaton, there was only one of the selected jurors that was not pro-death penalty. That doesn't mean he can't vote. I think it was a man. Doesn't mean he can't vote for the death penalty, but he wasn't, he really wasn't for it. Right. And to get the death penalty, you have to have all 12 jurors agree. To get a guilty verdict, you have to have all 12 jurors agree. So it's going to be very interesting, very intense. Uh, if I have it here, I'm going to play an interview that uh, Nate Eaton did with uh, Larry, with Larry, JJ's grandma, uh, grandfather. And he, you can tell he's so much more relaxed than when he was at Lori Vallow's. Because Lori, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. And I think he's just so relieved that it's under it's getting underway and he knows Chad's guilty and he feels very confident. In fact, let me see if I have it here really quickly. Um, it was a cute, it's about three minutes long. Yeah, I do. Let's play this. This is Larry Woodcock and he talked to a Navy for about three minutes here. So let's just listen to this. This is a good one. Hold on here. Let me share this. Here we go. Nate Eaton from East Idaho News with Larry Woodcock. What was it like walking in the courthouse today? It was deja vu all over again. Uh, 
this time so much less stress. Why is that? I, I think we fought the battle with Laurie because we loved Laurie. We trusted Laurie. She let she lost that trust. Uh, I've seen the worst. I've heard the worst. And I just I feel like there's evidence that we have not heard and there's probably some evidence that we have not seen. But I think that Kay and I, our family, are prepared for this. And more so than the first time because we were newbies the first time. I think a lot of people were newbies to this. And uh, I just, I feel like that we're better, we're in a better place mentally, physically, emotionally. What do you, um, what was it like seeing Chad right there 10 feet in front of you? You know, seeing Chad in front of me was a little disappointing in the fact that I, I just, I, I look at Chad and I don't look at Chad. I look at the photographs that I saw of JJ, the remains of Tylee and Tammy. Who oh, why? It, 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 it never made sense. I don't think it ever will make sense. So in, in looking at, at Chad, um, I, I just don't have any, I don't, I don't feel anything. I really don't. Mm. So uh, a lot less stress this time around. Oh. And um, any, any prediction on how long this trial will take? What are you thinking? I will never have a prediction about that. If we walked in Monday morning and they said they have reached a verdict, uh, a wit, I mean, a, a plea, a that's fine. I, I've come to grips with the death penalty. I was adamant about it when this happened. I was angry. I was angry beyond, I, I just couldn't even help myself. Now, there's worse things than dying in life. So what would you say to the, the Daybell family as far as Tammy's siblings and parents? This trial is, is for them. I mean, this is about Tammy and the man they knew. They didn't really know Lori. Any advice you share for them? What I want to share with them is I have never stopped praying for his family. I know what I've gone through, and I honestly can't imagine what his children are going through. I feel for him. And I, and I feel for his family. And the, the brothers in that family, I love. I, I consider them friends. But, you know, we're all going through this together. And I think emotionally, we're, we're bound and bonded. Okay, anything you want to add? Right. Thank y'all. And thanks for caring for Kay and I. We love y'all. He looks and sounds really good. He does. He, he yeah. does. Definitely a lot different yeah. than when uh, yeah. Lori started. And yeah. like they said, the, like you said, the difference was they knew Lori. They trusted mm -hmm. Lori. They gave her JJ to adopt her and uh, oh, yeah. her and Charles, Kay's brother. And then to have this betrayal is just awful. Half fast, uh, Haku. I I know what you're saying. She says Trisha claiming blackmail won't wouldn't work for Chad, since he went on to marry Lori. I agree. And hey, I'm not saying it's going to make sense because they're nuts. But they could say, well, yeah, I did love Lori, and it was all Alex. Alex was blackmailing us, and you know, he could include Lori in that. But I do think. Anything he can do to throw Lori under the bus, he will. It's not going to be like Lori's trial where she did everything she could to protect Chad. No, 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 no. He's going to be throwing her under the bus so fast. She's just going to be flat out there. So anyway. Um, oh, yeah. Terrible betrayal. But he does look so much better. So much better. I'm happy. And, you know, Kay and Larry, they've been through hell and, and 
they've really touched all of our lives. And uh, we all want to be there the day Chad is found guilty. It would be interesting if they had a plea deal, but there's never been any indication that they've even offered Chad a plea deal. You know, if they did, it would be plead guilty, spend your life in prison, and we won't do the death penalty. That would be the only right. plea deal that would make sense. But I don't even know if they did that. So And he'd probably have to allocute, which I can't see him ever doing. Yeah, exactly. He'd have to go and tell him exactly what happened. And, uh, but yeah, he won't because he's not going to admit to any of this. Right. But again, the one of the main things I'm real anxious to find out, what are his kids thinking? Are they going to testify for him? Are they going to testify against him? You know, if they're subpoenaed and they don't want to testify against their dad, tough, they got to. So it's going to be very interesting to say the least. Okay. Uh, Moonlight View said, Larry recently had surgery, but he has recovered quite well. Yeah, he looks great. He yeah. really does. He, he looks, he reminds me of like a grandpa that rides a Harley, you know, uh -huh. uh, looks like that. So, okay. Now, uh, again, if you just joined us, excuse me, the young teenager that we had uh, on the front here. Let me grab that. Where did it go? Here it is. Uh, she has been found safe. Again, she's from Franklin, Tennessee. And her name is uh, Akela Jaslyn Walton. Found safe. All is well. Life is good. And I love, love, love leading with those types of stories. Okay. Now, you know, for the past four or five days, I've really delved into, dived into, if you will, Mm -hmm. All of the discussions about Sebastian Rogers, the 15 year old that went missing on February 22nd, uh, his mom, Katie Proudfoot and stepdad, Chris Proudfoot have been giving interviews. They have not come across well in those interviews at all. Chris Proudfoot has uh, admitted to uh, proudly hitting him with a belt, being reported to CPS, supposedly CPS apologized to him uh, because they said that. Sebastian exaggerated, and then he went on Nancy Grace and said, no, he that never happened. If there was no CPS call. So many different stories. Now, he's not under, they're not under oath. They can say whatever they want, but they have a missing kid, you know? And, and if you go back and listen to the, the interviews, Chris Proudfoot just sounds very arrogant. In one of the interviews, he said, come on, bring me the hard questions. Come on, I can do it. Let's do yes. this, you know, ugh. Well, anyway, I went around and I was reading like the Facebook groups, a couple of other groups, and there is so much drama and there are so many rumors. And I'm just begging you all, just stick to what we know as, as the facts. Just discuss what Seth Rogers, that's Sebastian's dad, have that what he has said. Discuss what the Proudfoots have said, you know, uh, Seth, Seth's mom you know, listen to what they have to say. They're the ones that know. There have just been crazy rumors going around. And I got to gotta brag just a little bit because websleuth.com, we have a great discussion going on about Sebastian. And uh, I am so proud of how they're talking about him. They are sticking to the facts. And when I say stick to the facts, they use the facts to come up with theories. You know, what about this? What about that? And there's no drama and it's just wonderful. And so I want to put the uh, link to that discussion here and I'll put it in the description as well. But this became a, a tit for tat thing because Seth Rogers came out and talked about how Sebastian had been abused uh, by a boy who he said was 13. He blamed Katie saying that Katie should have been watching him and he wasn't. Katie came out and made accusations against Seth saying that Seth was removed from the base, I guess an army base, uh, because he was getting violent toward a doctor. And um, Seth went on a, a, a YouTuber channel and said, no, that's not true. What he did was he wasn't feeling, he felt that his son Seth needed a particular type of therapy after being abused like this, after being sexually abused, that his son needed a certain type of therapy, especially with his autism. And he was upset 
again, this is just, I'm paraphrasing what he said here. He was upset that his son wasn't getting the proper therapy, therapy from this doctor. So he stood up and raised his voice. And he said, when he raises his voice, people take it as a threat. Uh, Katie Proudfoot said that Seth hit, had hit Sebastian uh, and abused him. Seth told of a story where Sebastian was throwing a fit and he put his arm out in front of a door and Sebastian ran into his arm with his head. Again, you know, who knows? The, the thing is, this doesn't, doesn't help find Sebastian, you know? It just doesn't. There's just so much drama. And um, the Facebook groups are the worst. And then that thing you sent the other day where people were posting that one thing happened to be Katie, but it wasn't her. Oh, yeah. That was awful. It was awful. And they finally removed it. Let me tell you what happened. There was another woman named Katie Proudfoot. Payne, Katie Payne. Katie Payne Proud. And she eventually was proud. Yeah. But it was proud. She had Proudfoot. She had Proudfoot uh, on her. She was another Proudfoot at some point, wasn't she? Well, in the article about the case, no. The, okay. the information they, website the person looked up had all kinds of mixed up information. Right. Anyway, they claimed that this Katie Payne was Katie Proudfoot and she had been arrested and charged with, with killing a child. It wasn't the same person. And they put the pictures up and it wasn't her. But it was, it was in Facebook. And on a, on a group, you know, a Sebastian Rogers group, and they were insisting, oh, no, this is her. And everybody's going, oh, yeah, it's her. Look at this, Katie. No, it wasn't. And that was the worst. I don't. Here's the thing. I don't care if Katie is the worst person in the world. Do not accuse somebody of something like that. That's horrible. It seriously took like five minutes for me to figure out it wasn't yeah. the same person. It was so simple to do. It, it, it was very it was. easy. And the good news is, like I said, if you click on the links that I sent you now, it's all gone. Somebody had the wherewithal to take it all down. Yes. But again, my darling true crime angels, your words have power. And these people that did this, they thought they were righteous. Now, the thing is, do you think the mainstream media would not have uncovered something like this mm -hmm. immediately? Yep. It oh, was... Yeah. That it would only be these these people on Facebook that had the smarts to do this. Come on. So always remember that. If somebody is is posting something and it's a huge story, it would be a huge part of the story, but yet nobody else is covering it. That's the first red flag. Very first red flag. Mm -hmm. So And a lot of us or a lot of people that started have looked up their backgrounds. Well, it's yeah. Part of the research and none of that was there. So Exactly. Exactly. So uh, I'm just what I want to talk to you tonight about Seth or, and about Sebastian was please don't believe everything you read. Mm -hmm. Stick to the facts and uh, don't spread it around. Now, I sent it to you guys because I wanted to see if you had heard it, you know, and I wasn't going to comment on it. I finally went on and you did, too. We both went in and commented and said, this is not her. This oh, is yeah. not Katie Proudfoot. Stop it. You know. Yeah. So it's just very, very, very maddening. Okay, uh, let's see. There was something else here. I did that one. Hang on, everybody. Let's I think people need to learn distorting the facts and stuff doesn't help the case. It doesn't exactly. help solve whatever's going on, whether it's finding somebody who's missing or finding a murderer. Distorting the facts does not help. No, it doesn't. And here's the thing. I know how it feels to jump on a case and you've never ever, you know, joined a discussion group maybe, and you haven't become involved, but you become involved and you think you find something really cool and you want to share it with everybody. I get it. It's an exciting feeling, but in this day and age, you just have to be so careful. You have to be so careful. So, uh, yeah. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, half fast. Haku says, I never understood how a search for a missing boy turned into a battle of parents' personalities. Also, shame on disclosing personal things about Sebastian. Pass. That should be not should be should not be for the public. I I, I agree. I understand. I, I don't know why he did that. I'm not quite sure. Um, I think it was. Well, I take it back. I think I know why he did it. I'm not saying I agree. 
but mm -hmm. I think he did it because he wanted to show the public don't believe what the Proudfoots are saying, especially Katie, because here's what happened while Se uh, Sebastian was in her care. Okay. Mm -hmm. So don't think, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, trying to get into his mind. So don't think that, that Katie is this innocent person. Here's what has happened. And it wasn't the first time that she had uh, let Sebastian be with a, uh, a sexual offender. Now, this was the first time from what I understand that he had been abused, but uh, very, um, very troubling. So I think that's why he did it was to say, okay, Katie, you know, you're trying to present yourself as this great mother. Well, here, I, I was shocked when he said it. I was, yeah. and I don't know if he regrets it now or not. I know I, I'm not trying to defend him, but I do know when he gave that interview, he had, was exhausted. He hadn't slept. He'd been searching. Sometimes you just don't think clearly, you know. He might just be at the end of his rope and not knowing what to do. I don't know. But I can tell everybody that um, the, the part where it shouldn't be for the public, we both totally agree on and Trish mm -hmm. really agrees on it because we had this information a while ago and we chose not to share it. Right. Well, yeah. we're, not, we're not going to because it doesn't, first yeah. of all, it doesn't matter as right. far as looking for Sebastian. It's just yeah. salacious and everybody would be bah, 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 talking about it. Yep, so. exactly. It, like you said, it had nothing to do with finding Sebastian, and so there was no reason for Exactly. You know, but now it's out there. We could say that. but Right. Yeah. Um, Half-Fast Haku says, I know why he did it, but can't excuse it. I understand. And yeah. there are a lot of people that are upset. But again, thank God. Thank you, universe. Please never. I have never been in his situation. So, you know, Lord know what I do. Okay. Um. No, Red Like Wine again, it was Sebastian's father who told the story about Sebastian being abused under Katie's watch. And uh, and he said that Katie never got him help. And then Katie came back and said, yes, she did. And and the doctor that he was, Sebastian was seeing that uh, Seth got kicked out of the base where the doctor was located because he was threatening her. And then he said, no, he wasn't. And just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So... Yeah, he is at the end of the rope. You're absolutely right, Carol. And uh, so he, um, my heart just breaks for him, man. I just, it's one of those things where I wish I could just reach through the screen and just hug him and say, oh, I don't know if it's going to be okay, but we're here. We're yeah. here. We're here. You know? So anyway, I really hope one day they invent that ability because there are so many times I need mm -hmm. to put my face through my computer screen just to smack somebody. Oh. So, that's what I really want to do. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I want to get back to the Daybell case here really quick because I have a a little piece of video I'd like to play for you. So hang on here. Let me find it. That's not it. That's not it. Is this it? Oh, no, that's it. Here it is. Uh, this is from Court TV, and this was put up uh, earlier today. And this is, uh, it says, Lori Vallow, Daybell's uncle. The Daybells were a perfect storm of evil. And I think this is uh, very interesting. You'll find this very interesting. We're jumping back and forth here. But again, and I'll keep repeating this. I'm an old bat. You got to give me a lot of room. Okay. So here we go. Again, this is, uh, this is Court TV. And we thank them for this. And this is, this is about 10 minutes long. So we will be stopping to identify it here in accordance with YouTube's fair use policy. Here we go could have a jury seated by this afternoon the pool oh, and they by the way the jury is seated they've got it no court tomorrow they start opening arguments on wednesday which we will carry live from the courthouse here we go of qualified jurors are returning this morning and then attorneys will use their strikes Today begins week two in the Doomsday Prophet murder trial. Chad Daybell charged in the murders of his first wife, Tammy, and current wife's youngest children, J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan. The trial playing out in the same Ada County courthouse where wife Lori was convicted of murder last year. Chad faces the death penalty and Lori did not, which is why jury selection has taken a little bit longer. At the courthouse, we've seen a lot of familiar faces. We also met up with a juror from the Vallow trial. Well, the prosecution told me when I interviewed them after the Lori Vallow trial that there would be new information. So they have new stuff that we're going to see. So I'm interested to see what that is. Um, and then, of course, yeah, that it's a death penalty case. That's going to be a lot different for these jurors. 
And the court is looking to seat 18 total. That includes 12 jurors and six alternates. As soon as it happens, we'll let you know. That's the very latest from the Ada County Courthouse. I'll send it back to you, Julie. All right. Thanks to Matt Johnson for that early update. Now let's talk more about what we can expect when this highly anticipated trial begins. I have two wonderful guests standing by to talk about it. Jury consultant and human behavior expert Susan Constantine. And also we want to welcome onto the program this morning, Lori Vallow's uncle, Rex Connor. Good morning to you both. Wonderful to see you. Uh, Rex, I want to start with you. Our hearts go out to you and your family members, all that you've been through. Our condolences, of course, first and foremost, for the deaths of, of JJ and Tylee. Uh, you've already been through one trial, as we know, with your niece Lori's case already going, already being disposed of. Do you or any of your family members plan on attending this trial too? Not very many family members. No one's planning on it. I will probably go at some point, and, but it's not to support uh, the defendants by any means, but... There are a lot of people there I like to thank, and I did that at Lori's trials. Kay and Larry for getting the process started, all the law enforcement, all the media people, including Court TV, have been so good about carrying this story. And because of that, the world's united to find justice for Tylee and JJ and Tammy and Charles. So a lot of people to thank. I'll go for those reasons. Um, and I'll be following the trial uh, from home like millions of others. Sure. Okay, everybody, this is Court TV. Uh, they are interviewing Lori Vallow Daybell's uncle. I believe his name is Rex Cox. And that's who you just heard speaking. Let's continue. Sure. You, you've always been very gracious, uh, Rex. We applaud you. This, this can't be easy, what you've been through, what you're going to continue going through. Uh, thank you for that. Susan, I want to show you a clip, please, really tapping into your experience as a body language analyst. Uh, this is from a 2020 hearing uh, with one of the detectives we've seen uh, throughout the progression of this case, really the lead detective, Ray Hermosillo. And he's talking about some really graphic evidence in this clip. And I want you to take a look at Chad's expression here and tell us how you think a jury might perceive the way he's acting. When I returned to that area, they had already dug down and located uh, a what would appear to be a, a mass of burnt flesh and uh, charred bone. Okay, and just the way live television works, we lost our signal with Susan. Uh, so, Rex, I know you're not a body language analyst, but we just as human beings, we analyze other people's body language all the time. And the point we wanted to make here is he is expressionless. You know, when you're thinking about those precious children, I mean, Lori's children, and their remains found in his backyard and in his job previously, little known fact about him, but I'm sure the prosecutors will make a big deal about it here, is he was a grave digger, a grave digger before he became the prophet and the author and the preacher and everything else uh, he claimed to be. And by the way, uh, this is Court TV, and thank you. This is a great interview. Yeah, Chad was a grave digger, and his wife, Tammy, uh, made all the money, took care of the house, paid the insurance. She was the main everything in that house. But uh, yeah, I mean, did you see Chad? They're taught, did you hear what they were saying about, this was Tylee they were talking about. And that big right. fat stupid potato head sat there like he had a stick up his back, motionless, just duh. Okay, let's see what uh, Rex Cox has to say. So I'm not very mature guys, even though I'm old, I'm immature. It just makes me so angry because I can't do anything but lash out like a kid on a schoolyard. Okay, here we go. Uh, Rex, how do you think the members of the jury are going to receive him when he sits there and doesn't appear to show emotion when police are talking about J.J. and Tylee? Well, I hope they will see right through him as they did in Lori's, in Lori's trial. You had my friend Tom Evans on there who was one of the jurors in, in Lori's trial here in this segment. And Tom said they could they could see through that. And so the fact that he's emotionless, uh, I hope the message is I'm uncaring, I'm as cold as ice, and that's why I was able to participate in the slaughter of these 
two people and then the other victims that have been involved. Oh, Rex, you said that so well. That's exactly what the prosecutor should say, what you just said right there. Uh, portray him as cold as ice. Uh, that's really what they've got to do. I am very curious if the defense team will call Lori as a witness. And John Pryor, Chad's attorney, was asked about this. Rex, I want to play a clip where he answers the question. Let's watch. It's possible. It's always possible. Anybody be could, anybody who's connected to a case could be called. And I don't want to specify, and I want to be clear. I'm not telling you that I am or that the state is or anybody else is. Okay. But anybody could be called. If you have an involvement in this case, potentially you could become a witness in this case. Okay. Now, Rex, you know Lori personally she's your niece uh i just made a, a what do i want to say maybe a little bit of a an informed prediction just based on what i've seen from following this case for the last you know it's over four years now um that i think if she was asked to testify for chad that she would absolutely um, you know what do you think she would do you know best I think she would love it. And I don't know this version of Lori very well, as close to the previous version of Lori, but um, I believe she would love it, be able to get up there and talk about the alternative reality that they've created together. And we would hear nothing else except that alternative reality about um, their mission and, and the same type of dribble that came out when she made the statement at her sentencing. So I doubt that it would be very productive for the defense, maybe for the prosecution. That's true. That's Everybody, we're watching Court TV. They're interviewing Lori Vallow, Daybell's uncle, Rex Cox. And I agree. Don't you think Lori would jump at the chance just to be in the same room with Chad again and to defend him, right, insightful one? I mean, that would be her dream. Oh, probably. You know, yeah. I don't know with her anymore. <laughs> She's just nuts. So anyway, let's continue. I hope they get the body language expert back. I really do. That's what I'm, that's what I'm waiting for. So let us continue, my darlings. Here we go. Got about three more minutes. Really good point, Rex, maybe for them. Uh, let's take a look back at some of what she said at sentencing, particularly she said, no one was murdered. Jesus knows me and Jesus understands me. Ugh. I mourn with all of you who mourn my children and Tammy. Jesus Christ knows the truth of what happened here. Jesus Christ knows that no one was murdered in this case. Accidental deaths happen. Suicides happen. Fatal side effects from medications happen. Oof, we all remember hearing that. Uh, Rex, tell us, what were you thinking? I'm sure you remember the moment when those words came out of her mouth and you know what happened to JJ and Tylee. What do you think when you hear that again? I painfully remember that very, very well, sitting in the courtroom with my wife, Lisa, and I was just, um, still to this day, I just can't believe what was coming out of her mouth and how arrogant it was, how, um, I, I still don't have the words to describe it, but um, I, I, I wish I could do more for you on that question. I just can't describe it. It was so uh, awful is the only word that can come to mind. Right. It left you speechless. Did it not? It left you speechless, huh? It certainly did. Right. Mm -hmm. um, as you said before, Rex, this is not the person that you knew. This is not the niece that you knew for so many years. Um, do you think Chad was responsible for the big change in her personality? No, I think she was working that direction and, and meeting Chad as her brother Adam says, her brother and I do a podcast and I've written a book about it. He said that's just the it was just pouring fuel on the fire it is the perfect storm of evil getting together. So I don't blame one over the other, neither Alex over the other or all three of them and other conspirators unknown as the original um, paperwork said, 
that's who we want to see uh, brought to justice. So I, I, I think they're equal in this crime. I really appreciate you sharing your thoughts. Uh, Rex Connor, thank you kindly for your time, uh, for, for being so open with all of us. Would love to talk to you again really soon. All the best to you and your family members. Um, it, it's very clear you, you are a, a lovely family, and so many of our viewers are so sorry that you all have been put through this uh, because of, of another family member's decisions. I, I apologize, everybody. I said Rex Cox, Rex Connor is Lori's uncle. My apologies. Again, I'll just keep repeating it. I'm an old bat. What can I tell you? What can I tell you? Yeah, JDR, I wanted to bring that up. Hang on, just what the hell? I wanted to bring that up. Hi, JDR, good to see you. Other conspirators? Who do you think they're talking about? I, I mean, Zulema, uh, Alex's wife, she wasn't charged. I don't know who they would be talking about. Maybe this is a question for... Uh, for Lauren from um, Hidden True Crime when she comes on on Thursday. What, who, who said that? I missed that part. Uh, it was uh, Rex Connor. He said, oh, uh, we want to see the other conspirators brought to justice. Mm. You know, and I'm trying to think who that could be. Uh, other Daybell conspir conspirators. Um, I, I don't know. A lot of, now, I, I think if Melanie, good Lord, I just forgot her last name. Polowski. Melanie Pulowski, the niece. Uh -huh. I think if um, if they had any evidence, they'd bring it against her. Now, remember, it was her um, ex-husband that Alex shot at to try and kill. And uh, he missed. And remember, Alex tried to kill Tammy, jumped out in front of her with a gun, and it jammed. And she thought it was a paint gun. But uh, they really got Alex, what a... That guy was a loser all the way around, um, you know. And uh, who was their friend? Uh, Melanie, the one that, that Gibb. reported. Melanie Gibb. I don't think she's one of the conspirators, not at all. Uh, you know, she helped the police. Now, I know a lot of people criticize her and, and tear her apart. Uh, yeah, she could have done more. And we could go into that for days and days and days. But she certainly isn't one of the conspirators. So I don't know who he's talking about. I, I sure would like to know. It would be interesting, but I've made a note to ask. I think the niece is one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely the niece. Uh, because, you know, I mean, good Lord, she showed up at the house where her kids were staying. And who were they staying with? They were staying with um, their father's parents, I believe. And she showed up at their house and the co cops caught her. And she got arrested because she wasn't supposed to be there. It's like, what were you doing? What were you doing? And was Alex there too? I think Alex may have been around there at some point. So I'm not sure. But did you watch uh, Melanie's recent trial she had for the computer tampering? No, I didn't. What did, what happened? Yeah, for um, I'm not sure of the outcome, but it was computer tampering. Supposedly, she hacked Brandon Boudreaux's computer. So mm -hmm. it was a trial just recently. Yeah. And you don't know if she was found guilty or. Correct. I don't know. That's it was a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if it's over with. I'm sure it went quick. You know, I can look it up actually. Hey, would you look it up while I yeah. chit chat with everybody here? Because that would be fantastic. That would be great. So yeah, there were just so many weird things. Like I said, showing up Melanie Boudreaux showing up at her former I think it was her in laws where her kids were. Was she and she wasn't she wasn't supposed to have anything to do with them. Was she was she gonna take them? Was somebody going to kill him? Was Alex Cox in the area? I don't know why I'm thinking that. But uh, yeah, Alex. Oh, that's right. Alex was with Melanie. That's right. You know? Oh, thank you, Ellie. Thank you. But uh, it's just very compelling. All of these bizarre, like, stories that swirl around these two. You know? That just swirl around them. I am fully convinced that Tylee's father, Joseph Ryan, was murdered. Uh, he was found in his apartment in Arizona with the air conditioner off. He'd been there for like two weeks and they couldn't couldn't tell the type what happened to him. You know, it was, it was just, he was due, too decomposed. But um, there's certain little tidbits of information that point to Lori being at the apartment at some point. You know, just so many, and again, and I've, 
posed this question to you before. How many people have you had just drop dead around you? I mean, we've all had, uh, most of us, maybe one, maybe two. You know, my father, very old. He didn't drop dead in front of me, but he did drop dead one day. The people that died around Lori and Chad, it was amazing. <laughs> you know, really. You have uh, Joseph Bryan. You have uh, her husband, uh, Charles Vallow. Uh, you have Tammy Daybell. You have the kids. And then you have Alex Cox. You know, and there was a neighbor that knew Chad Daybell that dropped dead and his kids have been very vocal. Don't even say that Chad Daybell had anything to do with my father's death. So we won't, but you know, how many people around you end up dead everywhere they went. It just seemed like it was, yeah, it was Chad's neighbor. Um, just seemed like it was uh, very strange. Right, Arizona. Alex, that's right. Alex was waiting in his vehicle when um, Melanie Boudreaux went to where her kids were staying. So, yeah. And Chad's neighbor's family said, please, because every that's what everybody thought was, oh, my gosh, did he first try out whatever he does to kill people? Did he try it out on his neighbor? Because his neighbor was a, a healthy, he was older, he is my age, you know, but they, he worked his farm and they said he was didn't have any medical problems and he just dropped dead, which happens. Mm. So anyway, very strange. Did you find anything? No, you know what? That trial might have happened further back than I thought, but I can't find anything on it except um, it was scheduled. They had brought charges in 2022 and dismissed them. And then she was scheduled to go to court of October this last year for that. Oh, and I don't know. I'll have to look more into it. Let's see. Uh, let's see, hold on, to appear in Mesa, hold on, this is from October, uh -huh. uh, niece of doomsday mom, Lori Vallow, to appear in Mesa court for computer tampering charge, and this was by Justin, our good friend Justin Lum, we love him, this was October 2013, yeah. um, but it doesn't say what happened, Right. according to the court on September 26th. Pulowski has a criminal record in Utah. She was arrested for criminal trespassing with domestic violence enhancement in November 2019 when police say she tried to get her children who were staying with Boudreaux's parents at an American Fork in two separate incidents. Yeah, she showed up. Grandparents called 911 when Pulowski would not leave the property. Who does that sound like? Okay, so let me just do this really quickly. Let me try one more thing here. If you could just take a look in chat and see what people are saying that would be great oh yeah it's oh, let's give me a complex so yeah Lori and chad did have definitely you know that's people around them dying that obviously was murder i mean Lori was convicted of some so we know that for sure but like i knew three people that were murdered so it kind of gives me a complex when people say that well, okay, but yeah, it's different. They were they were murdered, but you weren't a suspect in their murders, right? right. And they're all solved, yeah. Right, right, no, exactly. Like I said, Lori's convicted, so we know, you know, you know, it was murder, and who's involved? You know, she was convicted right. legally. Okay, this is from five months ago. Justin Lum, uh, Melanie Pulowski does have a trial in Mesa Municipal Court on ten nineteen. Well. It looks like it happened, but nobody knows what happened. Well, that's crazy. Huh. Okay. Well, maybe we can ask Justin Lum on his Facebook page and see if we can find out. Or, you know, what, what am I talking about? I'll just ask the people on Web Sleuth on the Chad Daybell trial case yeah. and see what they say. So, very, very interesting. Oh, gazing at the moon. Wants to know how Levi's doing. Levi, uh, Levi's doing great. He is Levi Page. He's. Uh, I've asked him to come on. And he's going to try to, which would be great. So, again, he's one of the uh, the old timers. He started doing true crime when he was eighteen, and he started appearing like on Nancy Grace and and those programs when he was like eighteen and nineteen. And uh, yeah, he's he's a great guy. He is really the best. So. 
Oh, Lindy Bridges. See, I don't remember that. The problem is uh, Lori deemed JJ and uh, uh, Tylee as zombies, dark spirits. And Lindy Bridges is saying there were texts about Melanie's kids that are really concerning. The kids were, quote, zombies, unquote. If that's true, then they were marked for death. There's no doubt. Yeah, that, that was in the the trial. Yeah. So they, I'm sure they were marked for death. Maybe that's why Melanie was there. You know, that's why she was there to kill him. That's why Alex was with her. And, you know, what a better way to hurt her ex-husband and his parents. Because I'm sure she felt betrayed by him because he wasn't going to put up with her crap. That poor guy. Oh, my God. When he testified at Lori's trial, it was heartbreaking. Absolutely mm -hmm. heartbreaking. So, yeah, I'm sure those kids were on a list. And that's what's so scary. And, again, I don't know who the people are, but few things I've read, there are still people that believe in Chad Davo and believe he is this special spirit of some sort. And like you just heard, there is going to be new evidence. And I can't, I'm telling you, I can't wait. I can't imagine what it is. But it's been a long road, again, from that day in 2020 in June, helicopters flying over the, the property, and then Chad Daybell jumping in his car trying to get away yep. and they caught him it was great absolutely great so uh deborah brown deborah brown baron melanie uh did not melanie pulaski did not have access to her children they were with uh their father's parents and she was not supposed to see him and she showed up there twice yeah at the very least i bet she was there to kidnap him at the very least but who knows what else so Anyway, okay, everybody, uh, that's about it. Tomorrow court is dark for the Chad Daybell case, but Wednesday morning, I believe it starts at 9 a.m., we will start, and there'll be a feed from Judge Stephen Boyce's uh, camera, and we'll carry that feed the whole time. We're going to do the opening and closing arguments and maybe certain witnesses. It just all depends. But uh, Hidden True Crime, Lauren will be there every day doing, uh, you know, live streams, and she will be uh, doing reports from the courthouse. So if you want to watch it live and we're not here, check out Hidden True Crime. They'll have it right there. And, and then again, we're so thrilled. She'll be here Thursday night. She'll be here once a week while the trial is going on. So anyway. Oh, that's right. When I got a, I, this is such a great thing to remember. Uh, when we for you says, remember Chad applied for a permit to lay concrete over Tylee's grave to move a trailer in. That's right. That's not suspicious. Oh no, not in that not right at all. spot. Yeah, same spot and everything. Not at all. Again, just want to say one final thing. I can't believe that he's actually going to trial. I don't know what defense he'll put up. Lori didn't put up a defense because she didn't want to do anything against Chad. You know, so who knows what's going to happen, but we'll all watch it together and discuss it for sure. OK, real quick, everybody. I want to remind you that um, at WebSleuth or at WebSleuth YouTube Live, uh, we don't ask for donations. We don't ask for super chats or anything like that. And we are so grateful we can bring this to you without having to do that. So what we would like you to do if possible, there's a great organization called dnasolves.com and they have like hundreds of unidentified bodies, unidentified remains where they need to raise money for the um, for the DNA test. Now each one of these DNA tests costs $7500 dollars yeah and so one of the cases that we feature here is this case all right and let me just pull this up real quick this is uh Belusa county sheriff's office teaming up with Authorum to identify a 2006 john doe it's almost been two decades he's a white male he was found in deland florida he has not been identified there is a drawing of what they think he looks like so I've put the link 
at the top of chat. It's pinned. I will put it in the description. If you can find a way to donate even a dollar, we would be forever grateful because again, when you sit down and really think about your most precious, precious loved one, just saying, see you later, never seeing them again, having no idea where they're at. It makes my stomach just flip. It upsets me so much. And there are hundreds of these people that, um, that they need the answers and they deserve the answers. So if you could donate something, that would be fantastic. Again, the link is at the top of chat pinned and I will put it in the description as well. Okay. Okay. Websleuths.com. If you'd like to join in on the true crime discussions, we have so many of them there. I'll put the links in the description as well. All you need is an email address and you just kind of need to behave when you're on the uh, forum. You can't threaten to kill anybody or, you know, call someone stupid, things like that. We're silly that way. We make people behave like adults and they do. That's why Web Sleuths has continued to grow and uh, continue to just be an amazing site. And I give all the credit to our members and to our moderators. You know, people talk to me about Web Sleuths all the time. They go, oh, great job. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's the moderators and the members, okay? I'm just here just putting out fires and, and hanging and seeing what's going on. So anyway, okay, everybody, thank you. Um, yes, DeLand, Florida. Didn't I say DeLand? Did I not say DeLand, Florida? She, she said, hey, I live near Delano. Oh. Underneath, she says DeLand. Got it. Okay, got it. So there you go. Carol, take a qu good look at this and, and click on the link at the top, mate. Who knows? Stranger things have happened. Maybe you do know something. You never know, right? You never know. Okay, everybody. I want to thank Moonlight View and Four Sons Mom. Thank you so much. Ping the router. I'm assuming he's going to have another live stream tonight. I hope so. We love you, Ping. Hope to see Love and Coco soon. And of course, you Insightful One couldn't do this without you. But we'll be back tomorrow night, 1030 Eastern on Web Sleuth YouTube Live. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.